Non-traditional trademarks are those things that indicate the source of a brand, but are not brand names, logos, or slogans. And it's one of my favorite topics to talk about because there's so many exciting, interesting examples of different non-traditional trademarks. But for the vast majority of businesses, over time, they traditionally haven't had a lot of need to protect non-traditional trademarks. However, that is changing some, in my experience, as the barriers to create and promote these things uh, become lower. And I think you'll see what I'm talking about with these examples. So I'm gonna tell you today about a variety of different types of non-traditional trademarks and some examples of them. Now, keep in mind that protecting and registering them is possible, but there is a lot of nuance and special challenges in addition to all the normal application challenges that come into play. We're not really going to go in depth about those challenges today, but know that they're there. Buildings can be registered as trademarks. What I mean by that is the shape of a building, like the exterior shape of a building, or the interior layout of a store or building. Examples of those interiors is uh, the Apple Store, has a registration for like the layout of the store. <laughs> and Chipotle has a registration for the sort of common design themes that you'll find in nearly every Chipotle. And that is one key in doing these things is if it's a one-off, it's gonna be a lot harder to protect than if it's something that's consistently done by a brand. Uniforms can be protected. so. A famous example of this is the pinstripes of the New York Yankees are a registered trademark. The NFL football teams, many of them have registrations for their uniform color schemes. Uh, but uniforms that are not sports related can also be protected. So the uniform of a UPS driver is a registered trademark. And other things like there's a cool tech company, I forget exactly what they do, but at trade shows, all of their salespeople and employees wear like bright green neon ties uh, with a black shirt, I believe. That configuration of a uniform is a registered trademark. Colors can be registered. Just a color alone in connection with a specific product or service can potentially be registered. Well-known examples of this are I mentioned UPS, their color brown for package delivery services. They use it on the trucks, in the uniforms, in their advertising, in their logo, et cetera. That's a registered trademark. The magenta color used by T-Mobile heavily in all of its advertising is a registered trademark. Sounds can be non-traditional and registered trademarks. So the NBC chimes are registered. Believe it or not, the sound made by a lightsaber in Star Wars, because they sell toy lightsabers that make that sound, is a registered trademark. Shapes can be registered. So shapes usually comes in the form of the shape of the product, if it's a unique and not entirely functional shape. Uh, or in the shape of the product packaging. So an example of the packaging is an Altoids tin. That shape is a registered trademark. And think about it, the way this translates to commercial and common uses, you'd think, well, if I saw that tin and I didn't know, I couldn't read the writing on it, would I know that it was Altoids? Or would I presume that it was Altoids just based on the shape? If that's the case, then that shape is functioning as a trademark because it's telling you about who makes the product, where it comes from. That's the whole purpose of a trademark. Footwear designs can also be registered as trademarks. So a lot of sneaker configurations, sometimes the soles, sometimes the stitching and layout of the whole top of the sneaker or shoe can be registered trademarks. Think about Air Jordans, think about Vans, and a lot of other footwear designs are now commonly registered as trademarks. And a famous trademark footwear design example, non-traditional, is the Louboutin red sole shoes. 
And there was a big dispute over that a couple of years ago. I won't go into it, but it's a great example of the type of thing that can be registered and protected, but has challenges. Also talking about fashion, the stitching on jeans pockets can be registered. So Levi's and many other jean companies have their special stitching designs on the pockets that don't really serve a purpose other than to have some look or feel or fashion element to them. And those different stitching designs can be registered as trademarks. Scent. Scent is much, much less common than all these other already uncommon trademark forms, but smells can be registered. There's not a lot of smells registered. I think it's maybe between 10 or 20 smells that are registered. The most famous one is the smell of Play-Doh, toy modeling compound, often used by children. That scent is a registered trademark. Some of the other scent trademarks that are registered are often industrial. So fluids for machines or engines where they sometimes will add a scent to make it, I guess, more attractive to the users, but the scent isn't integral to the function of the fluid. Those are some of the other examples where scents have been registered. Taste has not yet been registered. It's hard to think about an example of a taste mark where the taste wouldn't be functional, but I'm sure someday there will be some sort of a taste trademark registration as brands keep evolving, boundaries keep getting pushed. This video has gone on long because I told you I love this subject. I'm gonna to try to knock out the last few here. Lighting designs is a really cool type of trademark registration. Basically, the way that buildings are lit up, and I think Holiday Inn or one of the other hotels has like a unique color and the way that the lights are shined and what they're pointed at in front of their hotels, that layout is a registered trademark. I think that's really interesting and cool. One of my favorites all time, we're getting now to really some of my favorite trademark registrations of all time because they're oddball and they're fun to talk about and they're really, really unique. So the band members KISS have trademark registration for their makeup, for the configuration of their makeup on their faces when they perform. So can a KISS cover band wear the same makeup and get away with it? Or would that be a trademark infringement? That might make a great law school final exam question. I'm not sure. Mascots can be registered. The design, the three-dimensional configuration of a mascot. Sports teams, yes, have mascots often, but there are also corporate mascots that do promotional events for all types of businesses. And there are many mascots that are registered at the trademark office. The Boise State football field has a blue turf. You may have seen this on TV about a decade ago. They were really good and were on TV all the time. When you see the blue turf, you think of Boise State. They have a registration for that. Pretty cool, I think. And now we get to the two most bizarre and interesting trademark registrations of all time, in my opinion. Coming in at number two is the Marching Ducks of the Peabody Hotel. That's right, the Peabody Hotel is known for several things, one of which is at an appointed hour during the day, several ducks who stay in the hotel are marched in a procession down the elevator, through the lobby, I think around a fountain and back. And this is sort of an event at the hotel every day. And that event, that procession involving the ducks at the Peabody Hotel is a registered trademark. It's not easy to put that in a drawing or a description of the trademark, but they have managed to do it. And then the number one, in my opinion, wackiest, most interesting trademark of all time is a restaurant in Wisconsin that has a grass roof with goats grazing on it. And having goats grazing on your grass roof for restaurant services is a registered trademark owned by this restaurant. That's a pretty unique one. So that's a lot about the basics of non-traditional trademarks. I hope you enjoyed that fun 
lesson. If I left anything out, please leave me a comment. I'll do another whole episode. I can keep going. <laughs> Thanks for listening.